Have you been noticing a connection between the stages of your menstrual cycle and flare-ups and worsening of your symptoms? You might notice that at various times of the month, you're feeling more tired or maybe more hungry or you're able to perhaps stand up more or you're perhaps feeling more palpitations. This then leaves you wondering, is this a worsening of my symptoms? Is this a new flare-up? What could be the trigger? Well, sometimes it could just be hormones. The impact of hormones is important for everything. If you're trying to pace and rest more, you might notice that at certain times of the month, you need it more than usual. If you're trying to do a low carb diet, you might notice that at various times of the month, it's harder. If you're trying to implement more movement in your day-to-day -day life, again, you might notice that sometimes it's a lot more difficult than other times. Much is still not known about hormones and exactly how they influence and impact us. So far, there's mostly been small scale studies done. So it'll be really interesting to see how the field develops over time. So if your experiences differ from what I'm about to present in this video, that could perhaps be why. Our bodies are all really unique. So first off, a bit of background information. The menstrual cycle is broadly speaking 28 days. This differs for women, of course, but for purposes of this video, I'll refer to it as 28 days. It is split into two halves. There's the follicular and then there's the luteal. In the middle, there's ovulation. The first day of your period marks the follicular phase. This is when the body produces more estrogen and pre prepares to release an egg. Then there's the ovulation, when the body releases the mature egg down the fallopian tube. And then there's a the luteal phase. This is where the lining of the uterus gets thicker and this prepares for a possible pregnancy. If conception does not occur, then the thickened womb lining sheds and that's when your next period starts. Now, now that we have an overview, let's go more slowly through this cycle and let's talk about the possible effects on symptoms. Let's start with the follicular phase. There was a research study done that actually looked at POT symptoms in the follicular phase versus the luteal phase and it compared that to markers in healthy women as a control group. In the control group, the blood flow and the blood uh, pressure didn't really change much in either of the phases. It was constant. Now, for people with POTS, they found that the blood pressure and the heart rate were similar between the two phases, but they found that the cardiac output, which is the amount of blood that the heart pumps each minute, was lower in the follicular phase than in the luteal phase. And they also noticed that in POTS, the patients, they were more likely to feel lightheaded and weak and like they're about to pass out in the follicular phase. So in other words, right around this period, right around the time you get your period and the two weeks after your period, you might see this the most. So what can we do in that moment? Well, this is where it's really important to get those fluids in through the food that you're eating and also obviously through salt and water hydration. And if you're bleeding a lot, this can also make you weaker. So making sure that your iron levels are okay, or if not supplementing with the help of a doctor. And this also might be the toughest time to do cardio. So some people like to focus more on strength training during this time and they, as they feel they have more strength instead of focusing on their cardio movement as much. Then there's ovulation. Some studies have found that starting at around week three, women are more prone to injuries as the hormones make the ligaments and tendons more lax. So for those with hypermobility, which is often seen in pods, this is something to also consider. So focusing, making sure to focus on form and making sure that the exercises are done correctly as to decrease the risk of injury. Then there's the luteal phase, and this is where there's high estrogen and progesterone. And this is associated with greater increases in these renal adrenal hormones. What this practically means that, is that this leads to more volume retention, which of course, as we know from kind of the basic POTS recipe, more water and more salt that means that you could stand longer and more easily. There's more blood volume. So in week three, you might find yourself being able to do more cardio or being able to be upright a little bit more. Now, you might be watching this video and thinking to yourself, but wait a second, you're saying that in the two weeks before my period, I should feel the least lightheaded and the least like I'm about to faint? Well, according to that study, yes. So what they did find is that the system that modulates blood pressure and vasoconstriction is less affected now during these two weeks. But of course, I'm sure you're probably thinking because the majority of the people that I speak with, they say that their symptoms are actually the worst right around ovulation and right before they get their period. So a little bit of, to the opposite of what I'm saying here. Now, why does this happen? 
this might be because of the drop in hormones. So what are the physiological changes that are actually happening around this time? When you're in the luteal phase, your body temperature is increasing. So a warm or hot environment might also be tougher than usual. So that might also make you feel as if your symptoms are a little bit worse at this time of the month. And be aware of that as well. Um, perhaps try incorporating a cooling towel or a vest more often because of this, this change in body temperature. And then week four, the week right before your period, you might find that you're in the most sluggish. At this point, it's best to do light stretching or yoga and just be really, really gentle to your body. This is also where you're the most likely to have the cravings for the high carb and the sweet foods. But at the same time, many of these foods are also the ones that cause inflammation and actually do make symptoms worse. And high carb foods can't make symptoms worse for those with POTS. Now, don't ignore your cravings and don't ignore what your body is asking. Get in touch with your body and if it's asking for more food, it's asking for it for a reason, right? But perhaps there's a way to substitute various foods, right? So for example, foods like whole grain bread and brown rice, complex carbs instead of simple carbs like chips or bread or pasta, that would be advisable more throughout this period. Even for things like sweet, sweet, um, sweet food cravings, right? There's honey, there's fruit, there's smoothies, and these also hit the spot and they're quite gentle on the body as well. And it's not just about during these two weeks, right? Removing the kind of foods, these kind of inflammatory foods also help long-term with balancing hormones, with increasing energy, with just healing the gut in general. And if you're looking for more support with implementing dietary changes, since they can be really tough to do, then reach out to me for help with implementing some of these changes and making sure that, that they stick. So other than the above mentioned steps, what else can you do? Tracking is really useful, mostly in the beginning. Tracking the flare days and looking if there's any correlation with the menstrual cycle. This can also help you be gentler to yourself on those days and on those weeks. And also goes in hand with this, but planning ahead. Don't be surprised if those days things are just harder. You can't control what really happens um, because the, the hormones are controlling us. But you can control some of the fear around this since you know it's only a temporary thing. This will pass, it's just this phase, it's just this one week, etc. And like this, you could start adding more tools to the toolbox to manage everything. Now, it does take a bit of time and effort to see what's a random player or what's a part of a bigger picture, but overall, it is worth the effort. I hope you found this video helpful in terms of breaking down what you can expect from your body at various stages of the menstrual cycle. And I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway down in the comments below. Let me know what trends have you noticed between your menstrual cycle and your symptoms. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe to my channel. And if you hit the bell, you'll get a notification each time I post a new video. Take care and I'll see you next time.